Hello everyone, and welcome to your fifth Apple debugging tutorial. In this tutorial, we're going to be talking about the memory graph debugging tool in Xcode and how we can use it to debug some retain cycles that I've put into this little application below. Now, the memory graph debugging tool in general is just a way to take a snapshot of the currently running application's memory allocation. So it'll show you everything that's currently allocated for your application. And this is great just to show how many objects you have currently running and which ones are running. But more specifically, I think it's useful for detecting retain cycles. So the memory graph itself will show you that object A holds object B, that holds object C. And this, this chain of events is useful in determining uh, maybe objects that aren't being released when you expect them to be. So the retain cycle is one such case where basically object A holds on to object B strongly, and then B also holds on to A strongly. And this is a scenario in which both object A and B, if uh, you know they nobody else might have a reference to them anymore, the general case is that let's say A is a view controller and B is a view, right? And the view controller then goes away. It was maybe dismissed, for example. And now you're in a place where even though the view controller should be gone, right, this whole cycle is going to be stuck in memory now because everything holds each other, each other tightly. So uh, the general example that I can think of here is that we have A as a view controller and B will be a table view. So the view controller will hold on to a view strongly and the table view, if it's a sub view, is also held on strongly because it's a sub view. And B, being the table view, is going to want to communicate back to the view controller. And this happens all the time if you implement a data source or a delegate. Now, the way we get away from having this strong reference is just to declare that the delegate or the data source is going to be weak. And that means that it will not hold on to the object that it's weakly referencing. So this means that this last reference here is actually going to be a weak reference in the data source or delegate case. And so if object A gets removed from, so let's say it just gets dismissed, then nobody else holds on to A anymore. Well, that means its retain count essentially goes to zero and it can release any objects that it holds on to and then everything gets cleaned up. Right? So the case that we're trying to debug today are cases such as this where there's a chain of objects that all have strong references in a cycle like this. Okay, so let's just dive into the application that I've created for this, and it's uh, just a really basic kind of horrible UI chat client, but uh, it basically just has the name of the person and then the last message that they sent. You can favorite this if you want. If you double click into it, it'll show you all the messages that they've sent. Again, totally arbitrary, but you get the idea. So you can double click any one of these. This view here is the chat list view controller, right? It's a list of chats. And this view over here is going to be the uh, chat details view controller. So just for some context in that. The uh, other things that exist, we have the table cell. So table cell class is just this cell right here. Then there is a toggle button, which is going to be the source of many of our problems in this application actually, um, mostly because it has this closure. And this closure is going to hold on to any objects that it, you know, if it's a if, a, if it's a closure, anything that the closure holds on to, by default, it has to hold on to those as a strong reference, or else, you know, it's indeterminate. If something goes away, then if you called this this closure, then the whole thing would just end up, you know, crashing in weird ways because some of your objects may or may not exist. So by default, closures always hold on to the objects that are passed into them as a strong reference. So we'll come back to this one later, but the idea with this toggle button is simply that instead of using target action, we could use a closure instead just to report back when I press the button. So nothing fancy, but that's what it is. Then there's just the simple chat model, nothing fancy and uh, nothing really to talk about there. The last little piece that is of importance is that this uh, is the standard window that you get in a new AppKit app. But uh, by default, these the, these windows don't get released when they're closed, and I've actually enabled release when closed on this window so that I would expect that if I close the window, 
everything that is in the window should get cleaned up. And it's just a good way that I can check to see, do I have retained cycles in this application that are prolonging the life of um, some, some objects? Okay, so uh, with that said, let's uh, go back to our application here and let's see how we can go into the memory graph debugger. So pretty simple, we go down to this little uh, three circle icon, click on that, and it is gonna build the memory graph for you. And this is the memory graph debugger. So it's a little graph of objects that own other objects, and we can see all of the objects that are running in the application over on the side here. At the top, you'll see the all the objects that you've created in your current module or app in this case. So lesson five, we have our app delegate. And you'll notice that we actually have 104 chat objects, which um, probably, you know, is not supposed to still be there considering we closed uh, the window. We uh, actually, I guess we didn't close the window. So that's all pretty fine. I guess we would have all those chat objects. Um, the thing though that I wouldn't expect is that this chat details view controller is still here. So when we double clicked on the individual cells, that's when we present the chat details view controller. But for some reason, there's still three of them in memory. And that's not what I would expect. I would have expected that they should have just gone away when we close them, right? That's just the general expectation with view controllers usually, unless you wanna hold on to them for longer. Um, so yeah, we basically have everything running still in this application. Um, so if I'm doing a debugging session with the memory graph debugger, I generally wanna try and simplify this case to be as simple as possible. So I'm just gonna completely close or quit the, the running application and then just let's run it again. And I'm gonna immediately close the window. And now what this allows me to do is check, well, what memory is alive after just launching? And you know, it simplifies the problem to figure out what objects might be retaining what objects. Now, as we can see, this does simplify the problem a little bit. We can see when I go into the memory graph debugger, we have 47 chat objects, 47 table cells. Note that the view controller itself is actually gone. So that means that there's some kind of reference between either the chat objects or the table cell. Uh, we kind of have to figure out what's going on here, but we have 47 toggle buttons, 47 table cells, and 47 chat objects. So probably the problem is somewhere within there. If we click on one of these instances of chat, I don't know why it's not showing me, there we go. So if I click on one of these, this is the memory graph debugger showing you who owns this object. And generally speaking, you wanna start with the object in question. So we've clicked on the chat object and that'll be the one on you know the most right. And as we work our way back, it shows us who owns or who has a strong reference rather to each object. So we can see that coming from a swift closure, we're capturing this chat object. And so you know there's a strong reference from a closure and the closure is being held onto from this toggle button. So that's interesting, it means the toggle button somehow holding on to this chat object. Um, we have this table cell over here and it has a bunch of, oops, not what I wanna do, but um, so if we look at these uh, table cells, there's a bunch of ways that it's being held onto as well. It's not really clear exactly why, but it, uh, we can see that there's a capture um, and then the toggle button is, you know, it, it has a strong reference from the table cell. So it's gonna be held on as we can see here. If we look at this toggle, there's a reference from the subviews, and that's what we'd expect, right? So there's probably some issue with how we've configured this cell. So let's go ahead and I'm just gonna stop the application, and I'm gonna go into where we configure the cell, which is in this chat list view controller. Now, if I, the only place I configure the cell is this section here. So we can see that there's this, you know, it's pretty standard configuration call. And the, the thing in question is really this button press closure, right? So this closure is holding on to everything that's within this range here. And we can see that the configure call really just passes the closure on to the toggle button. So pretty standard there. Let's try to figure out what it's holding on to. So we're holding on to the chat object, but this shouldn't really be an issue because the chat object doesn't have any reference back to the cell, right? And because you know, the chat object's just a model object, it holds very basic things. Generally speaking, it shouldn't really have a communication back to the view. So the chat object's not really a problem because the, you know, the cell holds the button, the button holds the closure, the closure holds the, the chat, 
but the chat doesn't go back to the original cell. So not really the problem. The real problem here is gonna be the fact that I was trying to print out the cell. And so I wanted just to print out the cell every time I press the button, but this is inadvertently actually gonna create a cycle for us. So because we've gone from cell to toggle button to button pressed uh, closure, and then the closure finally holds a strong reference back to the cell. So you can see how we've created this cyclic dependency between all those objects. So the way I can get rid of this is I can simply comment it out. And now let's verify that this actually fixes it. So I'm building and running. I close the window and let's go back to the memory graph debugger. And as we can see, great. I only have the app delegate available from our objects over here. All right, uh, let's uh, just try and run this again. So I'm gonna run the app again. Let's now check out what happens if I open up some chat details views. So I'm just gonna go into open up three of these. And now let's close the window and let's go back to the memory graph debugger. So interestingly enough, it now looks like pretty much everything's being retained again. So um, the important thing that I'm trying to point out here is that because we just limited our scope in that first iteration, we, we found one of the issues without trying to tackle the entire problem. So that's just a general debugging technique is, you know, try to limit your scope of the problem to its, its simplest conditions. So now that we know that we've, we've disabled the, or we've fixed rather all of the conditions without um, creating a new chat details view controller, we can now really focus on what is the problem when we create a chat details view controller. So if I click into one of these, we can see here is the chat details view controller. Another thing I wanna point out is the lines that the graph debugger tool shows you. There's a sort of more dull color line, which just indicates that it's a weak reference. And then there's a strong reference line. And the strong references are usually what we're more concerned about because they're usually the things that are holding on to the objects that uh, you know we wanna go away. Now we can see that there is um, from the chat list view controller, there's a presented view controller, and of course we are presenting the chat details view controller. So that's kind of to be expected, but that that this stuff should get cleaned up, assuming that everything else uh, is not a problem, right? So you know, if you present a view controller and dismiss it, AppKit should be able to take care of, of these cycles. Now, if we look at the other one though, we can see that this one this one kind of looks a little familiar, right? We just kind of deal with this problem where we have this uh, this closure object and then this toggle button and um, it's holding on to the chat details view somehow. So that's um, the point that I wanna make there. Um, the last little thing I just wanna show you is that on in the memory graph debugger, there's this little arrow that shows an expansion. And if you click on that arrow, it'll actually expand out for the object that you're, you're looking at. So if you wanna see the details of who owns that button, then you can click on that, for example, and it'll expand out to, to uh, show you all of that. So it, it'll show you here that there's actually, you know, there's a sub, sub views and it's being held on to by sub views. So I just wanted to point out that that is a button you can collapse and expand those things as well. But anyway, let's go back to our problem at hand. We know that somehow the chat details view controller is being held on to by the toggle uh, button pressed um, closure. All right, so let's go ahead and quit this. Um, so let's first go to the chat list view controller and see how we're creating this chat details view controller. So we can see um, we don't actually configure that button pressed uh, setup here. We don't actually configure button pressed until awake from nib. So it's actually not gonna be a problem until we're actually presenting the view, in which case means that it has to happen at a different time. So let's go maybe to our chat details view controller to just see what could be going wrong here. And uh, if we look at this, at first it doesn't really appear like we are retaining self anywhere, right? Here is where we're setting up the button pressed, and it's the only place we set up button pressed, but we're just passing it this method. I mean, what could be wrong with that, right? Well, uh, unfortunately there is a lot wrong with this, and it's very easy to overlook the fact that there's something wrong with this, because we don't have anything that says self, right? Usually the problem would be that we have maybe something that, that references self and then self is held on to strongly. And here, it doesn't appear like that's the case. But this is kind of a got you because favorited is actually an instance method. And because it's an instance method, 
it needs a reference to self. And so self is actually implicitly captured when we do an assignment like this in Swift. So really it's kind of the equivalent of just having a block where we say self.favorited and we're, we're passing that in. So how can we, how could we fix this case? Well, we'll make a block around this or a closure. We'll pass in, um, so let's just say state in, and we're passing in state, right? So this is really kind of the equivalent of what we just had, where we, we basically have a strong reference on self that's keeping this view controller alive, and that's where this, this cycle uh, occurs. So how can we fix this? Well, we basically have to say that we need a weak self. So we can uh, have uh, these capture, uh, capture lists where we essentially say we want self to be a weak object. And we can do this with any object. It doesn't have to be self. We could say that it's a weak, you know, any, any other object that you want to put in here. But in this case specifically, we want our self to, to go away because the issue is that self owns the view, which owns the favorite button, which owns the uh, cap the closure, which then owns self again, right? So that creates that cyclic dependency that we don't want. So we can say weak self, and we'll just call favorited like this. And that should fix this particular problem anyway. So let's go ahead and run this and validate whether that actually fixed it. So I'll you know, open a few things. And let's just close the window now. And if I go to the memory graph debugger, we can see that now it actually looks like a great, uh, great solution here. So all the only object we have in our lesson five section is the app delegate. And that's what I would expect, right? The window's gone and all of the view controllers that were contained in that window is gone. And so I think we've solved at least all of the, uh, the retain cycles that we could run into in this current implementation. So I hope this is useful to you, and uh, this is definitely a, a very useful tool that I like to use for when I'm stuck on a, a retain cycle in particular. Um, it just really helps to understand which objects are holding on to which, and sometimes you don't really think of the objects that would be holding on to. Obviously, in this particular application, there's not too many attack vectors for holding on to different objects, but when you're dealing with a much larger application, and you might have you know 10 different retain cycles that you don't know about it's very hard to understand where all of them might occur and you might just be hunting and pecking whereas with the memory graph debugger tool it's a great way to expose which objects still exist and which objects are holding on to your other objects with a strong reference anyway i hope that was useful and please leave a comment in the comment section below if you have any questions and i will see you guys in next week's tutorial see you then